The Silent Maestro How One Man Overcame Life's Cruelest IRA To Rewrite Music History The world has seen its fair share of extraordinary and tenacious minds. People who, despite their quirks, setbacks, and occasional brushes with insanity, have managed to bend the trajectory of history with their brilliance. We're talking about the likes of Einstein, Hawking, Churchill, and maybe even that guy who invented the wheel, though his name escapes me. But what if I told you that among these luminaries was someone whose life was a lot more, let's say, complicated? A genius who faced a cocktail of challenges so bizarre, you'd wonder if the universe had a twisted sense of humor. For now, we'll call him Lewis. Let me introduce you to Lewis. Now, Lewis had the kind of childhood that would make you wince just hearing about it. Picture this. A father who is an expert in three things. Being a mediocre entertainer, being an alcoholic, and being a total pirate. This man, in his infinite wisdom, decided that young Lewis had the potential to be great, but instead of nurturing this budding talent, he opted for a more unconventional approach, less supportive parent and more drill sergeant with a vendetta. From a young age, Lewis was subjected to a grueling routine. Imagine standing on a footstool to reach a keyboard, not because you're a prodigy showing off, but because you're a short little kid who can't quite reach, let alone see the keyboard. Standing on the stool gave you a better reach and view and helped prevent wrong notes. Because if you hit a wrong note, you face punishment straight out of a medieval playbook. Flogging, being locked in a cellar, or forcing practice when most kids were asleep and dreaming of toys. It was all just a part of the daily grind for Lewis. By seven, Lewis was already being paraded around as a musical child prodigy of six years. Unfortunately, Despite his undeniable talent, his first public performance was met with about as much enthusiasm as a cat at a dog show. And school? Though the kid was plenty smart, let's just say the classroom wasn't his forte. It was music that flowed through his veins, more naturally than words. Some speculate he might have had a bit of dyslexia or some other neurodivergent tendencies sprinkled in with all that genius. Providing for the family. At 15, Lewis found himself supporting his family. As his father's talent for failure had finally caught up with him. And sent to study in a distant city, Lewis's big break was rudely interrupted by a family crisis, pulling him back home. Years passed before he returned to the spotlight. And when he did, his brilliance was finally recognized. He composed, performed, and he fell in love. But as life would have it, his heart was promptly shattered, courtesy of society's rigid class structure. His pedigree was just not noble enough. Our genius had proposals for marriage shut down by three different women. Harsh. <laughs> and though he was known to have affairs, Lewis gave up on marriage. Seems even Cupid wouldn't cut our man a break. The music stops. But the real kicker, just as he was hitting his stride, the very thing that defined him, the music, began to fade. By his early 30s, he could no longer hear the melodies that had once been his solace. Yet in an almost comical twist of fate, some of his most remarkable compositions came after he was plunged into a world of silence. And life didn't get much easier for him. His health was horrendous in his later life. Not only was he deaf, but he struggled with jaundice, colitis, various skin diseases, chronic hepatitis, rheumatic fever, and cirrhosis of the liver. 
But somehow, the man was able to keep a sense of humor. When a doctor was called to drain fluid from his bloated belly, about three gallons of it, he joked that the physician had performed a miracle like Moses, having struck a stone and caused water to flow. <laughs> Our genius passed away at the age of 56. Well, if you haven't figured it out already, meet Ludwig von Beethoven, a man who, despite every curveball life threw at him, managed to create music that continues to move us centuries later. And to think, for a large portion of his life, he couldn't hear a single note of it. There is in this historical tale at least an ounce of wisdom and insight, maybe more. But for now, let's focus on just this one. At the risk of sounding mean, life is not fair. Sometimes we receive things we don't deserve, both good and bad. Trying to make sense of it is more than our mortal minds can often accomplish. We must learn to accept that life will always involve pain and injustice that we don't deserve. And gratefully, it will also grant, to those who choose to see it, greater beauty and joy than we can take in. So here's the ounce. We are left to accept what is, to be unapologetically who we are, to find joy in what life places before us, and to improve upon things when we can. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, thank you so much for watching us. I appreciate your hanging around for the whole thing. And gosh, if you got all the way here to the end of this video, why not give us a like uh, or subscribe even or hit the notification bell so you can keep up on those latest episodes and share it with your friends. We need all the help we can get in convincing the interweb that we're worth watching. Thanks.